Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming tonight. Let me call to order the the uh, May 12th meeting of the Charter Review Commission. Uh, we appreciate everyone coming here, and we appreciate all the members being here uh, tonight. Tonight, in just a few minutes, we'll talk about uh, the role of where we are in this process. I've asked Sarah Blakely, our attorney, to do that, and so we'll we'll get to that shortly and sort of set up some ground rules and, and so that we can hear from everyone that wants to speak. Um, Mary Lowry here and, and her assistant Greg over here have some cards. Anyone would like to speak uh, when we get to the public hearing part, if you just fill out the cards, and that way we can sort of keep it in order and give everyone that opportunity to speak. Um, but at this time, we've called the meeting to order. I would ask uh, any of the members, hopefully you received all of your packets early enough to review the minutes from April the 19th, and we would look for a motion to approve those minutes and accept them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grundy Gomez has moved that we uh, accept the minutes. And any uh, discussion, deletions, corrections, anything? Seeing, yes, sir. Minus my name, but let's, <laughs> we're going get, let's get that straight away then. Anyway, seeing none, those in favor of accepting minutes say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, motion carries there. Thank you. Let me open up the floor now. If any uh, of the members would just like to make brief comments before we get started tonight. Um, we'll recognize anyone that wishes to be recognized. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Grundy. Um, I, I know I, I'm not certain about how the particular format is going to be tonight as far as I know we're going to have public comment, but um, I know I got a phone call from uh, one of the concerned parties um, as far as uh, the motion that we had to reconsider on one of the uh, pending issues uh, for minimis, the dual vote issue that asked that we uh, not try to make any decision this evening uh, because they wanted to come back on the 26th and talk to us and specifically address some of the questions that uh, Commissioner Ferguson brought forward to us about having questions and issues and answers. Um, and uh, Ms. Rollins and them as a group wanted to come back and speak to the commission. So I wanted to ask if we uh, not address that issue this evening. Yeah, appreciate those comments. My personal hope that, that we will take no votes other than to adjourn uh, later tonight, and we just listen to the folks tonight. But, Bill, were you looking to be recognized? Okay. Anyone else? All right. Well, if not at this time, then we would recognize. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Rod Tuttle, please. Sorry. I just uh, wanted to make some comments, some observations after the last meeting. I came into this after Commissioner Delaney nominated me to be here with some understandings about our role and how we did things. And after the last meeting, I guess I came away kind of confused. Uh, my understanding is that we are here as individuals. We are here separate from the county commission and that we should be making our own decisions about what we want done. My other understanding was that we were here to serve the people in the hopes of coming up with ways to make the governance more, more appealing and better for the people that live here. At the meeting last week, I think 28 people spoke up. As an example, it happens to be mine, which is why I know the numbers. 17 spoke up about nonpartisan elections. Four to one plurality wanted them. And yet the number of people on the commission that voted for and against were three less than had voted the first time. So my question really is, what are we doing with these public comments? How much? Um, influence do they have on our judgment? And I'm sort of, is anyone else confused? Am I the only one? Um, I guess, I, I, and I, I, I certainly receive that, what you're saying. And I guess looking at the public comments is addressing whether or not we are a conduit or a filter um, uh, for, for, pub, for the public. We all are exactly right, individuals. and and. All of us think differently. Our socialization processes are different. Um, and we may not see things the same way. But we all are different. And I certainly um, understand the charge and in, in our role of what we're supposed to do. Uh, take it seriously. And uh, I'm not here at the behest to serve um, the people that appointed us. But I take it, you know, and all of us may not agree with what I'm saying or what you're saying. Um, but that doesn't mean we're all going to vote the same way. But what I will say is this, Mr. Chair, is I think that we should be a little bit more honest and, and in the spirit of this is that rather than saying that we're going to just vote to move something forward, I think we should be honest with our citizens. If we don't plan on voting for something, we as a body should just, if we're not going to vote for it, don't vote for it. 
But if we're going to vote for it and support it, support it. I think it should be just straightforward, just like that. And the citizens may not agree with us, but I think it's more honest for us to do that. Again, it is our right as individual commissioners to do differently. Um, so, but I do receive what you're saying and understand it perfectly. Thank you very much. And as Mr. Grande Gomez uh, knows full well that sometimes we hear things that change our mind. So we are listening, I can tell you. We are listening. And that's why we have these public hearings. Any other comments? Mr. Chair, I, I would like yes, sir. Mr. Strangman. Uh, I am, in fact, going to change one, one of my one. votes as a result of the, uh, the input from the, the people and the many calls and emails I've had. Uh, I don't intend to bring it up tonight because I don't think we have a plurality tonight to, to change that particular issue. But uh, it will be brought up before we're through, and I hope that we can uh, make a change in that particular issue. But I do understand what he's saying. I think we have, we have beat that particular issue around pro and con and lost track a bit of what our mission is, and that is whether it is worthy of going on the ballot or not. And that's, that's the reason that I'm going to change my vote in the future. I'm going to uh, recognize Ms. Blakely in just a minute. She's going to talk about where we are in the process and what uh, to expect from here. And I think we can clarify some of that. So I appreciate those comments. Yes, sir, Mr. Brinkman. Uh, I would like to re respectfully disagree with the opinion just expressed that, uh, as I understood it, we are more or less just to be, uh, I think the words used were to put anything on the ballot that was worthy of consideration by the public. Um, I think uh, honest people can disagree. There have been some uh, opinions represented by our attorney that we're employing and by others, attorneys, that uh, conflict. And uh, frankly, I don't think it's proper. I don't intend to vote for anything that I do not think is constitutional or a clear and uh, obvious attempt to simply do what the Constitution doesn't provide by simply giving it another I think answer. my remarks would be obviously uh, restricted by, by what you just said, Rob. I don't, uh, don't question then, that. Then actually we don't agree, disagree. All right. Appreciate those comments. Well, this time let me recognize Attorney Blakely then to come forward and, and uh, Sarah, if you will sort of guide us through exactly what our um, mission is for the next three meetings and and sort of set the stage for the public here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, yes, it's on. a lot of reverberation. Mr. Chairman and members, as an overview of where you are in this charter revision process, let me recap for you and the citizens, both those here and at home, the charge of this Charter Review Commission. It's really a takeoff on, on what y'all have been talking about. As stated in the Alachua County Charter, you are to review the charter, and propose any amendments or revisions which may be advisable for placement on the general election ballot in November. Those are the words in the charter, advisable for placement, however you make those decisions about what that term means. You spent many hours in charter commission meetings and individually um, on your own time giving thoughtful consideration to the proposals that have been made to citizen input and to the legal opinions that have come forward. At this time, you've placed seven amendments, um, advertised seven proposals to the Charter. Tonight is the first of three public hearings required by the Charter that the Charter Review Commission must hold on any proposed Charter amendment. Once these three public hearings are held, you will then vote on each proposal. The Charter says that no Charter amendment shall be submitted to the electorate for adoption unless favorably voted upon by a majority of the membership of the Charter Review Commission. Because there are 15 members, that means eight affirmative votes must be had for any proposal to make it to the ballot. Therefore, I would remind the citizens and the Commission of your charge, it's a two-step process. You all are only to determine which proposals, if any, are advisable for placement on the ballot. Then it's up to the voters in November at the general election and not this commission to decide whether any of those questions that you place before them are actually adopted. We have the seven questions, Mr. Chairman, like we did last time in separate slides for each one because we need a large type font for them to be shown. Shall I? Perhaps you just at least uh, go through the um, 
the title so that everybody sort of gets the flavor of those. Okay. Yeah, well, I need to go before um, she does the title. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Grundy. Mr. Chair, as a point of question, um, for these meetings also, um, Ms. Blakely, would Robert's Rules of Order be the governing? That's the rules of our of our of, of our. Is that what's going to govern as, as far as going forward? Yes. You have two sets of rules: Robert's rules and the rules that you all adopted at the at the and they include initial or Robert's second rules. meeting, I think, okay. and that include Robert's rules. Thank but you. mainly right now what we're doing is complying with the requirements of the charter to hold the three public hearings and um, and going forward from there, as Ms. Blakely said. Okay, if you could hearings. just sort of run through the titles real fast, and then we'll uh, be ready to go. This question one is citizens' initiative petition requirements for ordinances. Question two is limitation on Board of County Commissioners' authority to amend or repeal ordinances approved by citizens' initiative. Number three is to require both county and municipal voter approval of charter amendments affecting municipal regulatory power. Four is abolishing the county commissioners and replacing them with a board of charter commissioners. This one is the key that unlocks the ability to do the next two. And the question five is nonpartisan election of the board of charter commissioners. The next one requires the Board of County Commissioners to set their own salary by ordinance. Question seven, and the last question, abolishes the constitutional officers and replaces them with charter officers and elects them in a nonpartisan manner. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions, Ms. Blakely, before we uh, begin the public hearing? One question on Roberts. Yes, sir. Uh, the winning side can propose a recall and the losing side cannot. Is that correct? Well, that's the, the way it, um, it generally works. What you're really doing and what we did before on the one Mr. Grande Gomez brought up is we repealed our previous action and reconsidered. Uh, okay. Needless to say, if, if in a close vote, eight to seven, unless one of the people on the prevailing side does not switch, then there's no need to reconsider it. So that's the way it, it would work. Yes. yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing not, let me uh, lay down some uh, ground rules then. Um, we don't have um, quite as many people as we had last time, so this may not be as necessary, but we'd like to start with it. Uh, I've, I've asked um, the county staff here to have uh, sign-up cards just so that sort of first come, first serve. If you want to speak and you haven't filled out a card, I think Greg's over on the side there and we'll be happy to receive it. Um, we would ask um, at this time, and, and this just sort of goes back to uh, when I was a a young man, when I got in trouble one time, my mother, for punishment, made me memorize the Gettysburg Address. And so I got where I could say it really well there for a while because I was in trouble a lot. But, uh, but anyway, uh, a lot of people don't realize that the Gettysburg Address ran less than two minutes. And so we're going to grant you, because we don't think you're quite as eloquent, most likely, as Abe Lincoln, we're going to give you 50% more time than, than he took on the Gettysburg Address. And so we'd like to start out with three minutes, and, and um, uh, we'd appreciate very much just so everybody can get an opportunity to speak that wants to speak. Uh, if you would uh, adhere to that, we'd appreciate that. And what I'll do is, um, so we don't have to turn on the lights, at three minutes I'll, I'll put this gavel up so that you'll know a few, a few seconds before that, uh, 15 seconds or so, so you'll know to start wrapping it, wrapping it up. We'd appreciate that very much. But anyway, our first, uh, this time we'd call the public hearing to order. And uh, this time the members will sort of um, stand by, and we're here to listen. But Walter Willard is the first person that has stood up to speak. Mr. Willard, are you ready to speak? Come forward, please. Come forward. Mr. Chairman, while he's coming up, could I ask a quick Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Martin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you may have covered this before. I came in just a little bit late. Um, during the public hearing, when we're obviously hearing from the public, if we have any questions or comments do we ask them then or do we wait until after all of that is finished and how do yeah. you know plan it? Well, that, that's always in order but my personal intention is just to listen unless you know um, something just isn't clear and you need to clarify it or something but um, I think uh, at this point in time what a person uh, wants to share with us is um, is why they're here and, and so my advice would be let's just stand by unless something's not clear and you unless just we need don't to clarify. understand that's right that's right I just want to clarify something thank you Okay, so you want me to skip you for one time? All right. 
Rod Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez, please come forward. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, um, I wasn't going to read, but since I only got three minutes instead of five, I'll read. Um, it's my opinion that any charter appropriate issue should be placed on the ballot so that the voters can decide about the issues, especially when it comes to certain issues that had a lot of interest and potential controversies, su such as single member district and nonpartisan election. The single member failed 7 to 8, and the nonpartisan was approved 8 to 7. The fact that some of the um, comments at the last meeting were quite boisterous and threatening in some extent, if you ask me, it made me realize that I needed to do a bit more research. Um, like you, I think that many in the audience were taken aback when some of the citizens commented about the potential blood in the streets and how you may be violating the Voter Right Act should you even bring the amendment forward. Some of the commissioners even agreed with the citizens that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, obviously, many of the citizens believe it is broke, me being one of them, or we wouldn't be generating so much interest. To better inform myself about some of these comments, I did take it upon myself to do a little bit of research. And imagine my surprise when some of the actual citizens who commented 23 years ago were commenting in favor of single member district and even potentially with NAACP threatened a lawsuit against the city of, Alatra, uh, city of Gainesville if they did not bring forth single member district. I don't see what the difference is. You know, it, it, it was good back then. It should be good now for the citizens of Alatra County. Um, some of the commissioners also stated that they didn't feel comfortable without further data or study about bringing one of these amendments forward. Had you voted yes, that would have allowed you time or staff to bring some of the information forward, the data to better allow you to make an informed decision. By voting no, it appears that you made an uninformed decision, and that's not fair to the voters. As far as some of the data is concerned, many times the political science professor at the University of Florida, Kenneth Wald, stated that single member districts would lead to pork barrel politics, ward politics, and diminished voter rights. But with further research, he's also stated in the Gainesville Sun and some of his published research that single member districts can in fact increase citizen involvement, reduce the cost of campaigning, and help the citizens have a representative who is accountable to them. As far as ward politics are concerned, there are two other professors, one at the University of Iowa and Texas A&M, who say there are actually no studies that show that single member districts hurt minority policy involvement or representation. Um, as a matter of fact, I would assume that because of that, the NAACP has been in favor of single member districts for decades. Just as the city of Gainesville voters did 20 plus years ago, the Alachua County citizens deserve a chance to vote on an amendment that they potentially think will improve their life in this county. Those who see a need for this change will vote yes if it's on the ballot. Those who don't will vote no. That's simple. I hope that my comments tonight will encourage one of the commissioners to reintroduce the single member district amendment as Commissioner Grundy did with the home rule. Um, I leave you with a quote from Thomas Jefferson who is actually on the website, your Charter Commission website, that states, whenever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. Gonzalez. Appreciate your comments. Mr. Cleve Sharp. Mr. Sharp. Look in there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Board members. Cleve Sharp. Gainesville. The co committee woman, uh, DJ, made a good point at our last meeting when she stated, and I quote, I don't think I have enough information to make an intelligent vote, unquote. After saying that, one has to ask the question, being the vote was eight to seven, not to put single member district in, on the ballot in November. And if one member thought that 
that there were not enough information to make an intelligent vote. So the question has to be asked, does this board have enough information now? Under a single member district, and as you know, accountability and accessibility let the people decide. We've been going through this in Alachua County, single member district, and that is, for about 20 years. And it's going to keep popping up, I think, until we have a chance to vote on single member district. What is the fear of putting it on the ballot and let the people decide? That's all we're asking. And we're going to come back if I be living and do it again, and I hope not. Thank you so much. We appreciate your comments, Mr. Sharp. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've got uh, Begin Hanrahan. I get you're still mayor, right? Okay, Mayor Mayor Pugin. I knew that things are changing, but I wasn't sure when. So, Mayor Mayor Hanrahan, welcome. At about T minus seven, Mr. Clerk. All right, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Not that you're counting. <laughs> Not that I'm counting. Uh, Glad to have you. Welcome. Uh, again, I'm Piggy and Hanrahan. I'm Gainesville's mayor for about another week. I want to again thank you all for your service. I know this is an enormous dedication on your part to improve our county. I'm here to speak on behalf of the city of Gainesville, and I believe uh, you'll have some other municipal representatives coming forth as well, really primarily to advocate for question number three regarding uh, county and municipal voter approval. We do view it as a fundamental home rule issue that will allow each of the nine municipalities to ensure that they uh, maintain policy and fiscal uh, decision-making within their city boundaries. We appreciate your uh, forbearance and learning more about it and, and considering all of the uh, pros and cons of moving forward. Like most things in life, everybody everything does have a pro and a con, but we do, uh, when you have all nine cities coming forward in a unified voice saying that we believe that this is a good policy for all of our communities, we do hope that you will give the voters the opportunity to make that choice. Um, I will, uh, I think I expressed adequately some of my personal opinions on the other items the city of Gainesville chose not to take active positions on the other items unless the single member district issue was brought back up. And if it is, then I'll reserve the opportunity to make further comments in that regard. So again, thank you for your service and we look forward to a good resolution. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Brinkman. Mayor Hanrahan, I was wondering if you had seen in our backup the uh, two different versions, I'll call them, of the proposed Amendment 3. One of them, uh, you know, as we had discussed at our last meeting in the attorney uh, drafted. Have you seen that? And I'm afraid I haven't, Mr. Brinkman. I'm sorry. Okay, because it does make some changes, and uh, maybe we, we can discuss it. Or I, I would certainly, it's on the county's website. Um, well, I'm going to defer. It's possible that Mayor Travis or Mayor Davis may uh, be more knowledgeable about that than I, and I'll allow them to speak on behalf of all of the cities. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Mr. Willard, are you ready now? Are you ready or you want me to pass on you again? Okay. All right. I'll do it. Uh, Henry, w uh, excuse me, Harry Wise. Harry Wise. Mr. Wise, please come forward. Glad to have you. Oh, thank you. Um, real short and sweet. I wish, uh, would like for everybody to reconsider the uh, singer, single member district. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. I didn't even hardly get my button pushed up here. <laughs> Moving right along. Richard Sutter Sutterly. Mr. Sutterly. <clears throat> Welcome. Hello, um, Richard Shutterly, Mayor, Town of McAnope. Yes, um, I'm going to make this very quick. Uh, we just received Ms. Fleekley's um, rewrite, uh, and we just haven't had time. We, you know, we only received it a couple days ago. We haven't had time, and, and we would ask that you table this matter until the next meeting. Um, when we have a proper response, and uh, all of our members are gathering their information for that meeting. Good, good. And, and I'll just leave it at that. Thank you very I much. I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, we haven't had a chance to discuss that with our own attorney yet and when we get to that time, and so we don't plan to take any votes tonight on it at all, and so appreciate that so much. All right. 
Jim Drum. He's the city manager here. All right, we'll get to him in just a second here. We... Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, Good to have you with us, sir. Commissioners, uh, Jim Drum, city manager for the city of High Springs. I'm also uh, working with the board of directors for the Alachua League of Cities. And uh, first, we'd like to thank you all for your reconsideration to allow our item to be put back on uh, the table for discussion. We do believe that this is a home rule issue for our cities and we're, we think it's a very important issue for us in Alachua County. And uh, we, d we have uh, received the wording just recently. And again, I would probably echo what Mayor Shutterly said from Micanope is that we would like to have the opportunity to look at it again before we had any action from your board. But uh, we do have some concern that is a little different than we think than the initial uh, proposal that was put forward. But uh, we would, again, like to review it further and have that discussion hopefully at your next meeting, which I believe is on the 26th. That's correct, yes. So uh, it will be a, another public hearing similar to this one. And at that time, um, we'll get more information from our attorney as well as yours. Then yeah. That'd be great. Very good. That's all the comments I had. Mr. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank Manager. You. Appreciate you being here tonight. All right. Uh, Mr. Emmer, Phil Emmer. <clears throat> nice to have you with us tonight, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of this uh, short review commission. <clears throat> I, too, will take less than the three minutes. And uh, once again, I uh, took the questions you have and decided how I would vote if I were a member of this commission. So on question number one, and I'm sorry to agree with Mr disagree with Mr. Wood, who favors that. I believe that having a 5% initiative makes it too easy, and it makes me think of what could create a California-style initiative where there are so many issues on the program and it's very hard to be controlled. 7% isn't that many more, but I would support that view. On question number two, on the Citizens' Initiative, I had to think a lot about that, but I do agree that it would be better that if the county in its new status were to re support something that the city should also have to report, support it to maintain the integrity of the city or town in the Latchew County that feels that it ought to happen. Question number three. Oh, that's what I was talking about, number three, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. Question number two, I do agree with it should be yes. Uh, and that Question number three is what I just responded to about the uh, counties, and I apologize for making that mistake. We don't all know the numbers either, so we're, we're okay. following you. Go right ahead. Question number four, abolishing the Board of County Commissioners. I think that's just a technicality, and I would support that. And uh, the reason of that is to give you some better home rule and take you out from under the uh, wraps of having to do everything that the legislature requests. So I believe that's a good thing, and uh, uh, I know that Duval County has that. It's worked well, and I, I'm from Dade County, and it, it does that as well. I'm not sure it works well there, but it does happen. So I think it could happen well here. Question five, I want to say I'm very strong about that. Let everyone vote. And I don't believe that we should talk about whether it's one minority or another, and it offends me when I hear that. And I heard the term re reverse racism last week and uh, or last meeting. And uh, I want to recall to you that most of you are too young to know this, but in about 1965, there was a man named Neil Butler who was elected to city commission. And he worked for me at the time when I was developing Lincoln Estates, and I was concerned that there would be a conflict of interest because people would think that I was maneuvering him. I didn't. And I didn't want him to run for the city commission, but he did and he won. He was a nurse and he did a pretty good job on the commission. There was not much, there was no discrimination involved in his election. And we've had many people of all faiths and colors been elected since without any problem. I, won't, I don't want to hear any, I personally do not want to hear any issues about re reverse racism. I don't call it reverse racism, I call it racism, if it's discussed at all. Uh, setting the salaries, uh, I believe the proposal that you have on board is good and I would support that. 
abolishing constitutional officers. Uh, I always in favor and inform citizens' uh, right to vote, so I would support that as well. And uh, that would be my votes if I was on this group, and I hope that some of you will agree with at least some of what I said. And I want to commend you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the way you're running this commission me meeting tonight. I went home after the last meeting and spent four hours watching that program. And if a couple of people hadn't talked so much, it would have been two hours and it's <laughs> working much better than I. Uh, thank you very much. We, we appreciate that, but we're, we're here to listen. We thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Dion McGraw. Dion, I'm sorry, Dion McGraw. Well, good, at, good evening to each of you, Mr. Chair, and all of you who serve. I know it's a difficult task ahead of you, but I'm Diane McGraw, representing the Martin Luther King Commission of Florida Incorporated and also the 4As. And I want to get back in what we believe in, that the issue, the main issue, is why abolish the county commission? Give us some proof. Not because my needs, when you're talking to people in the community, their needs are not being met, but show us a visual picture or why abolish it. You cannot deal with single member districts and nonpartisan until you abolish the county commission. So we need to know, and what the citizens that I've been talking to are asking is why now? Why all of a sudden to go back to a process that we turned from from the 1950s? So you as a, you know, the county, the Charter Review Committee need to let and show us not take the emotions out of because what I was here on April 16th and what I'm hearing is a lot of emotions. Because before when we have campaigns, and, and I'm going to speak for a minute as a citizen, I remember when there was a lot of county citizens for change and you were trying to get rid of three county commissioners. I started to go back and look and talking to professors at the University of Florida in the law school. But the thing is, my grandmother always taught me, when you do something to hurt people in a negative way, it can always come back on you. So some of the same people that I started looking at that were part of Elytra County Citizens for Change are also serving on this board. That's me speaking as a citizen. But also a part of being a member of the 4As and also with the Martin Luther King Commission, people want to know, and people have been calling and coming to me because they know I'm politically involved, why abolish the county commission? That's the main issue, and I need to know proof. A lot of us are asking, well, why? What's not working? Because from what they see, this particular county commission that we have now, they have been going around and traveling to all of the municipalities and trying to work out the issues, whether it's Hawthorne, <laughs> Newberry, whatever. But the real issue here, you cannot deal with nonpartisan and single member districts, is what we believe in, until you deal with the issue of abolishing county commission. So why all of a sudden now to go back to something from a former from a government that was started, that we turned away from in the 1980s? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Morrell. Appreciate those comments. You ready, Mr. Willard? All right, sir. Abolishing the county commission, the message has to do with a uh, majority of the member voting member walked to Willard, came by New York, by. The message had to do with the majority of uh, members approval of the um, whatever or whatever, or whatever. And then when she got up here, and they go from 1 to, 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 to 12 and strikes, look like 8, 7 through 9 has been stricken, but she said number 5 is number 4. So I got all out of place. Okay, I understand. Didn't know where I was. Appreciate that. Uh, what will get by the better by uh, Isn't the county com commissioner's salary set by population? Said by state law and then by population, yes. State law and then population. So you can't, we can't be voting on that. So that is illegal, Mr. Grundy said. So that's illegal for us to be voting on that. Like he said, unless we were Europeanized. We haven't been Europeanized yet. I think Mr. Cameron thinks we have, but I don't think we have. I need to talk about they might get a grassroots effort going on over there. We can't sever an artery. We can't sever an artery and expect the bleeding to stop without cauterizing the artery. You're just going to make things worse. Talking about just sever the artery and hope it'll stop. You don't cauterize it. That's just going to make it worse. Now, how, 
is we ju if you just abolish the just at large members of the county commission, then you can have then we can have uh, two additional uh, single member districts, or do you have to abolish uh, all the whole commission? What? How did that go? How did that work? To have a single member. Right now, that's not before us, but if it was, then one of the proposals was to have five single-member districts throughout the county. Be five districts, no at large. That's correct. Okay. And then do we have a question on here? Okay. It looks like uh, a number, is it number four or number five that says it's, it's being discussed, but it doesn't say it's going to be on the ballot or not. That doesn't, this doesn't say it's going to be on the ballot just because you're discussing it. We don't know. I want to know is it going to be on the ballot. We won't know that, uh, Mr. Willard, until the last meeting uh, that we hold where we actually hold that vote. Right now we're just taking testimony and doing thoughtful consideration of these proposals so that we, we can make that vote when the time comes. We, nobody's made that decision yet. Okay, well, but when I picked this up and read it was on here, then uh, then saying my soul. That's what I wanted to know if it was on here because right. the last meeting didn't sound like it was on here. Didn't sound like there was a choice. It like, sounded like, sound like it was just five choices and all of them dealt with abolishing the county commission and no people's choice. But it's on here. <laughs> all right. Well, we thank you so much for your comments, Mr. Willard. Appreciate you coming forward. I don't see our extra Blue Ribbon Committee member here, but me and Mr. Stringfellow, Mr. Winston was here too. That's besides Brickman, Mr. Stringfellow, and Mr. Winston was here the last time. I don't see him here today. And we've got a lot of folks that, that offer their time in many ways to help our county, and we appreciate you doing that also. I thought Mr. Mr. Emma, Mr. Emma had bowed out, bowed out before we, before we sunset, but he said he wasn't a member. I, oh. Was he a member? He's been a member of many committees, but I don't know about the, that, that particular one that you were on. I don't remember. Oh, All right. That was the Blue Ribbon Finance County Finance Committee, and he, Walter did a nice job on that. I remember. I remember appearing before you. <laughs> Susan Baird. We're, we're fast tonight. We're moving on. Good to have you with us today. We've tried to limit our speakers to three minutes since you just got here, and we appreciate if you could go for that. Thank you so much. Um, oh, oh, I get my breath here. I just arrived. Um, my name is Susan Baird, and I'm a single mother, concerned Alachua County resident, and um, I come here to share some findings regarding some very important topics, which uh, you're going to be deciding on whether the people vote for or not. And one other thing that I thought would be a great idea, and I seem to, I'm not sure if I'm getting this whole idea correct or not, but it seems that you, the Charter Review Committee, should see your role as an investigative role to identify issues that need to be brought to the ballot. Um, first and foremost, to determine whether a new way of governing will be more effective to represent the people, not to choose what is best for the people, but to let us decide. Politics should be put aside and the end result should be held at its highest, which is the best representation for the people. With that said, um, I want to bring back um, a little bit with uh, one of the items that I think you had dismissed but are still considering, which is a single-member district, which is really the most effective method of representation. And a little background of research that I did is that the Gainesville City Commission switched to single-member district years ago. And recently, other counties in Florida had been required to turn to single-member districts and have done the same with the goal of improving representation. Locally, the Latcher County branch of the NAACP lobbied in 1986 for the Gainesville City Commission to switch to single-member districts, arguing that citywide elections left the cities uh, African-American facing taxation without representation. But now that the county would like the same thing, it's not a good idea that is wondering why is it good for one and not good for another, because I think their position now is that it's not good for the county. Currently, um, a commissioner is elected countywide and rules uh, countywide. That means that, for instance, every voter in the county would vote for the commissioner to represent a specific community. 
The analogy would be if all voters in every state selected the Florida senators as opposed to the citizens of Florida voting their own senators. That's the analogy that we're trying to put together to say why we want single-member districts um, voting for their own representation representatives. So um, single-member districts, only the community voters of a specified area would be able to vote for their commissioners. Single-member districts make commissioners more accountable to voters in their district and give these voters the best representation, and that is the argument why I think that single-member districts should be brought back and put on the ballot. Okay. Was that my three minutes? I had one you more. You got a few seconds here. more. Okay. Then second, the city of um, Gainesville has nonpartisan elections again. Why can't the county? Here are some good reasons why nonpartisan elections would improve our system. All registered voters, including independent and other third-party members, would be enfranchised in every election, significantly ex expanding the electoral. By eliminating party, um, party primaries, nonpartisan elections would create more diverse public debate. Since incumbents almost always win re-elections when they're not term limited, which is another one of my other considerations is to go ahead and, and put in place term limits, nonpartisan elections would force incumbents to broaden their appeal and encourage rivals to throw their hat in the ring. So if it's good for the city to have term limits, if it's good for the city to have single uh, membership, represent, uh, single member districts, and good for the city to have nonpartisan elections, why can't the county have that as well? And that is my um, our argument to go ahead and, and encourage you all to at least put it on the ballot and let us the people decide thank you very much uh, thank you for coming down we appreciate very much your comments i'm not holding any has anyone got any cards or anything? mr mayor davis did y'all want to um the city's wanted to make a presentation okay then we're we're satisfied with where we are on that with uh, next time okay well members um Surprisingly, let me just recognize, is there anyone that we haven't recognized or didn't realize that we'd asked you to sign in that would like to speak at the public hearing at this time? Well, on behalf of the commission here, let me just uh, thank all of you for coming tonight and, and for your, your thoughts. I can tell you, the answer to one of the questions earlier is um, we really do think about what you say. At the same time, we realize there's many citizens, and I'm sure you realize, there's many citizens that aren't here tonight that email us or contact us or stop us on the street or wherever and so uh, we're giving some serious and thoughtful consideration to have for some time and and I know that um, all of us put in many hours reading and and thinking about these things as we get closer and closer to determining what exactly we want to go on the ballot um, in November so Sarah is there any comments that you would like to make at this time if not I'll recognize any of the members and we'll close the public hearing at this time and I recognize them, Mr. Grandi Gomez I'm gonna wait. She, she didn't. Okay. She'll come back in a minute. Um, a part of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chair. Um, I noticed um, one of our one of our commissioners stated that they wanted to um, possibly bring up an issue um, regarding the prevailing vote. And since we're under Robert's Rules of Order, as we did specify and clarify, um, if it's anything is going to be brought up, it needs to be brought up at a subsequent meeting. Um, and I want to make sure that that's. I can't hear you. Could you speak up in the microphone, please? Well, that would that would be not exactly correct. Um, if you wanted to reconsider, and that's why I always say that you want to rescind an item, uh, reconsideration usually happens at the same time or um, depending on allowing advertisement and so forth. There's a couple of rules that go on in there. But uh, but as far as the way that, that uh, because we're not actually taking a final action yet, uh, I would think that it would be appropriate, just as we did with you, uh, to recognize any member that uh, wanted to place a motion before us. Did, this time. Mr. But, Stringfellow, did you want me to repeat what I said? I'm sorry? Did you want me to repeat what I said? Yeah. Uh, I, am I the only one that missed it? Uh, oh, no. What my, what my question to the chair was, if, if you want me to repeat Mr. Chair. Or, his question is, under Robert's rules, how do you um, reconsider a motion? And does that need to be advertised? And, and there's various rules that go along with that. Uh, but usually reconsideration happens at the same meeting. A later meeting, you're really repealing a, a previous motion that happened. And that's why whenever I repeated Mr. Grundy's motion before, I, I put them together. I said, let's repeal and rescind to cover those two. Um, but the idea of, of all is that no one is surprised in a, in a meeting that all of a sudden you don't bring something up that no one expected. Uh, and so we're not at, at that stage of the meetings uh, at this point because we're not taking some final action at this point in time but 
But Mr. Grundy Gomez is correct. There are rules that govern uh, whether rescinding an action or or um, reconsidering an action. And so, but in general, the body, what you want to use Robert's rules for is to just keep things moving forward and for everyone to have their say and everyone to be treated fairly. And so uh, we try to try to do that. Uh, but as far as if someone wanted to bring something up at a subsequent motion, it's all been properly advertised. And uh, we always have an opportunity for, for any member to bring up a motion if they feel like it's appropriate for them to bring it up. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, I was wondering if there was any interest on the part of the committee in taking up and just discussing, not voting on, the uh, amended version that was in our backup of the home rule or dual vote so that uh, we have the mayors here. If the attorney is prepared to speak to it, I think we could save time by having a discussion now. It would allow the mayors to go back to their respective right. governments and come back to us with a considered opinion. Nobody would be held to their opinion tonight. Just I think it might be good to have a discussion. Right. Now, given the time, that's one reason I wanted to recognize her, give her the opportunity to go over since we didn't wordsmith that one before, because it was one of them that came on later, that she could bring us up to date on that. Mr. Grundy Gomez, do you have a? Um, yes, Commissioner Brinkman, um, I, I received a call from some of the Florida League of Cities, Beth Rollins, um, and they did ask, respectfully ask, that they wanted to come before us and talk as a body when all of us were here. Not only that, but they had some other obligations that they weren't able to make it here this night, but they asked us that if we could, out of respect for them, that they wanted to come back and answer any and all questions and actually be able to discuss it. So they asked us not to have that discussion this, tonight, but the, on the 26th, if that was okay with the, the, this body. Of course, we can do whatever we want with the motion, but that's just some Yeah, I, I would respond that, you know, we have time tonight. We will have less time certainly the next <laughs> night at, at the next meeting. We have only two more meetings to go, correct? That's correct. And uh, it just seems to make sense with several mayors in the room to at least have a discussion so we can clarify in everybody's mind exactly what is on the table. Well, then without objection, we'll um, recognize Ms. Blakely just to read us the language since we've really not seen it in public uh, other than, yes, sir. I'm sorry. That's all right. Those buttons we're not looking at. I'm just getting my attention. Don't work. Okay. No. Um, just for clarification. Yes, sir. Because uh, I am a bit concerned with the whole notion of fundamental fairness. And if a party has said that, well, we want to be a party to the discussion, okay have input on it, and uh, I would say that we should take every step to allow them to do that. Now, I just want to clarify, are, are you just, just having Ms. Blakely address the issue, but no, right, no further right. discussion on it? She wrote an opinion, so I'd just like her to, uh, and, and that opinion's now in the public record. It's on our website, so all the cities and mayors have it. Um, but just to get the language and, and maybe so that we can think about it over the next week also. But if, if we don't want that, that's fine, too. Well, the, I'm, I'm just hearing a strong objection right. over here. Okay. So. The, fine. The, the other thing was that there, the, the, some strong objections that were, were brought up, Mr. Chair, was that Ms. Two, specifically to Ms. Blakely's wording. So mm -hmm. I was going to respectfully ask that we okay. wait and hold off on that. Tonight. Well, then, unless somebody objects, then we'll, we'll right. hold off until next time. I'm objecting. <laughs> All right. Any, uh, anything other than that that you wanted to address the commission, Ms. Blakely? Uh, we drove you all the way from Tallahassee, and we don't want you. We've we've kept you late. She's been getting home about two o'clock in the morning here lately. So we're. Is there anything else that any other business that we need to take care of tonight, other than to c continue to consider and and for the members to know that uh, we'll have a another public hearing in two weeks. We're under the guidelines of the charter now that have to be within so many days of each other, and so we're trying to com we have to comply with that. Well, and then at the um, uh, at the next meeting, then. Uh, We'll have the public hearing, and then we can have this discussion, or we can have the discussion before the public hearing, either one. We'll talk about that and determine which it might be better. Let me, let me talk about... I'm sorry, sorry Mr. Chairman. If, yes. if I can add, I, I know we're getting out a little early, and everybody really wants to do that. Um, if I could add something for the attorney to address for the, for the benefit of the public, um, uh, the, the HA, House Bill 131, um, maybe the attorney can give some brief explanation of what the, uh, what that is for the public's benefit. And I, I know in, in her comments and her prepared materials, I uh, did not want to particularly speculate on that uh, future piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. But maybe she can uh, give a little background in, in, in the Browning case uh, just for the benefit of the, of, the, of the public because that has some impact on the issue of abolishing the charter. charter. 
uh, the county commission, rather. Mr. Barton, I appreciate you bringing that up, and I think that's um, something the entire board is is uh, interested in, and because that's certainly impact uh, what goes on the ballot. Uh, would you like to bring us up to date and the citizens up to date on that? I would. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me first comment on question three, not to discuss what I've written, but just to point out that what I what I did is um, write a letter that includes the exact wording from the amendment that was proposed by the league, and then I took some of the issues that I heard raised last time and incorporated them in. And so that is the document, the letter, and the explanation is in there. And certainly um, I'm willing to talk about any of those issues that may relate, and I'll, I'll just wait until We're the We're headed on that on all the issues, because our, our charge to you was, here's the idea. Now, you put it in a format that, that you believe is legal and would recommend to us and on all questions. And then uh, it, in the final analysis, it will come down to us to either change those words, adopt those words, or not use them at all. So I appreciate that. If you'll address then the legislation, I appreciate that. Can I ask? I'm sorry, one? Mr. Martin. Thank you. Chair, just one question. Just so when I'm looking at this over and between now and the next meeting again, I can understand. Um, your changes that you made to uh, the, uh, what is it called, the City Municipal Voter Approval Charter Amendments, right. um, you just said they were in keeping in character with what uh, commissioners' concerns were. Is that correct? In, in part, they were. Um, one of the questions was whether it affected existing charter provisions currently and would have the effect of repealing or amending one of those. And so I addressed that in a, in a way outlined in the letter. Then there are some other issues related to the Constitution and some protections that are already in the Constitution. And I didn't, I, I thought it would be misleading. Um, the way the question was was crafted to put it on the ballot without correcting that that we've got a constitutional provision that already governs and requires a dual vote on services okay. and me, I didn't uh, want them just cut you off just for a second because we're going to end up in that whole discussion we didn't want to have if, if we go much further than that but I, well, I think you understand where you're what you're yeah, saying, I'm John. just trying to so when I'm reading this over okay. for the next discussion mm -hmm. you know making sure that I understand that what her Changes were, and I, I think she explained it. Okay, to me, that they right. were both. They were both to address concerns, and in your legal opinion, to clear up some things to make it more uh, constitutional friendly or passable or whatever by the past constitutional muster. Is that right. correct? Yes. Okay. okay. That's all I wanted. I'm really to happy to be able to. Then, see, I, yeah. then we'll hear the other well, side later. I just, I just wanted to know why. I, I we're going to get into that one pretty good next time. That's all I wanted. To know. <laughs> Thank you. All right. House Bill, what was it? One, 131. 131. Thank you. Um, let's see how many pages. I think it's about a 150-page bill. No, it's only 57. It's just single-sided. This is the omnibus uh, election bill that the legislature passed during their regular session. As I pointed out in my letter, the governor has not yet received it. It, it deals with more issues than one, um, so it's a, it's a, a broadly – crafted act um, relating to elections. Among other things, and in the very first provision, um, it says they create a new section of law that's titled preemption. It's 97.0115, Florida statutes. All matters set forth in chapters 97 through 105 of the Florida statutes are preempted to the state except as otherwise specifically authorized by state or federal law. And then they say the conduct of municipal elections shall be governed by a particular provision. Um, city elections are dealt with in a, in a different manner than county elections are. In January or February, I was asked about the lawfulness of um, the constitutionality of this body proposing uh, a, a charter amendment that would require nonpartisan election of Board of County Commissioners. In that opinion, I cited many uh, constitutional provisions that led me to believe that the um, legislature is in charge of elections and that unless it says elections shall be as provided by law for county commissioners in the um, 
Board of County Commissioners section of the Constitution, and because of the Constitution directs the legislature to provide by law for that, and the default, if you will, the county commission section of the statutes, it requires a partisan election. I opined, and in part, I opined that it wasn't up to you all. And part of my rationale, I think in a footnote, um, I suggested that one of the district courts of appeals dealing with a charter provision out of Sarasota County had ruled in a similar way, had reached the same conclusion. That is that the state has preempted by the voluminosity of the provisions in the election code, even though it's not expressly stated, because they had occupied the field, if you, if you will, and again, because the um, Constitution gives that power to the legislature, that um, y'all did not have the charter power to provide for nonpartisan elections of the Board of County Commissioners. That District Court of Appeal opinion was reviewed by the Florida Supreme Court during the middle of session and the, or right before session started, the session of the legislature, and the court overruled that District Court of Appeal. The Supreme Court overruled that finding that the state had preempted the field by its, again, by its voluminosity and went um, issue by issue through the charter amendments um, relating to elections that the Sarasota Charter had adopted. Those provisions dealt primarily with the mechanics of recount and auditing of elections. Um, as a consequence of um, last meeting, I re-looked at the issue of nonpartisan elections of the Board of County Commissioners uh, as charter commissioners because we hadn't really had a legal discussion about the um, effectiveness of creating charter commissioners and abolishing the Board of County Commissioners. I, I looked at the issue again and concluded that probably if you abolish the Board of County Commissioners, you take the board you, and create charter commissioners, you take the control away from the legislature. And as one of our, our um, speakers tonight said, you get more home rule. It would have the um, option of, of doing several things, but among them, um, the, the allowance to do nonpartisan election of Board of County Commissioners. Well, this session, in response to the Supreme Court's ruling on the Sarasota County Charter provisions, the Division of Elections of the Department of State proposed that language I just read that says that the legislature preempts the conduct, well, it's very broad. It, it preempts all matters set forth in those chapters of the election code, all matters. Um, very, very broad term. In, in thinking about it and reading it, I concluded that all matters hmm, means all matters, including nonpartisan elections. I consulted the Department of State Division of Elections, who has recently had a turnover, the, the um, head of the Division of Elections has left, and their general counsel has left too. They happened to come back for a goodbye ceremony or something, and I'd ask their uh, assistant general counsel the question. I wrote him an email and said, you know, we're thinking here about doing nonpartisan elections, and I'm reading this provision, and it says all matters. What's y'all's view of this? He consulted the drafter of this provision, not the legislator, but the person from the, well, is the general counsel from the um, Division of Elections, and she said it was her intent that all matters included um, nonpartisan elections. And so it's their view and probably my view, and it is my view too, that all matters would include nonpartisan elections and thus would be prohibited by the current statutes and preempted to the legislature to make those decisions. Um, the bill has been passed by both the House and the Senate. This identical legislation has been passed. The governor has not yet received it. As I pointed out in my letter, once he gets it, he has 15 days to sign it, veto it, or it becomes law without his signature, which he rarely does. So he's going to do one of those, sign it or veto it. Um, 
and, and the were, the affirmative votes were overwhelming and like 38 to nothing or something like that in yes. the Senate and all. So there's no um, outcry that a, that you know of asking the governor to veto it at this time. Is that correct? I mean, there's no. Well, there are a couple of um, other provisions in here that are of, of interest to folks. Um, one is there is a provision dealing with part of the bill that the governor vetoed um, the second week of session or third week of session relating to electioneering. He vetoed that first bill, and I don't remember, I think it's Senate Bill, no, it's going to say Senate Bill 6, and that's not right, but <laughs> some other bill relating to um, leadership funds. He um, didn't like the concept of leadership funds, and leadership funds and electioneering were in the same bill. I don't think he had any problem with electioneering provisions in this, in the Act, and in this Act, um, because it's already been found unconstitutional, and so they come about it at a different, a different way. Um, there are some uh, issues related to, to this in this bill relating to the um, ADA, the c citizens with um, developmental disabilities that have um, rights to vote in a certain manner, and he, he extends that out because there's so little money av available right now for another two years, and I think that's in this bill as well. So. Those kind of way, one way or another, uh, but I have no idea what Mr. he's going to do. Um, then I see Mr. And, and if you could, maybe you can educate me on this a little bit. As far as uh, vetoing, uh, is it severable? If there's a problem, if there's a, a part that uh, the governor felt, I, I, I like this part, I don't like that part. Can he sever? No. No, he cannot. You see. He, he cannot do that in this type of, of bill. He can do it in a budget, but so this is not a budget bill. He can line item veto in a budget, but can't line item veto in a, in a bill. He either so signs it or vetoes it. If I'm here and I understand this is, this is uh, just uh, a, a bit of legal analysis that you're kind of speculating about what happened here, uh, but if this bill does go into effect, that, uh, that ultimately, even if the issue of nonpartisan elections, abolishing the charter review, the county commission, and nonpartisan election were voted in, uh, that uh, this bill would just n null and void that. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. That doesn't prevent the legislature from coming back, and because there are other counties that have nonpartisan elections from coming back and saying, oh, well, we didn't mean this issue. Right. All matters. You know, but it is it, complicated. It's it's complicated. It takes time. It has to be another legislative session if, if that were to occur. And in the meantime, the opinion that I have and the one that the Division of Elections has is that all matters includes all matters being preempted to the state includes nonpartisan elections of, of charter commissioners. Mr. Brinkman. Thank you, uh, Ms. Bleakley. So you've clarified that you think it would apply even to in the case of charter commissioners, but. Uh, I guess my question goes to uh, what would it be more appropriate? Actually, I believe state law calls for doing it by special act of the legislature followed by a referendum in the affected county. It could be done that way. We did that with campaign finance reform here. Right. Would that be a way to move forward with any of these things in the case of uh, this bill HB 131 being passed? In that other would words, be one option, yes. The, the legislature, by special act, going right. to the local delegation, has the authority, um, even in light of the state preemption, to, to change that. Right. Yes. And, 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 in fact, you could also do single-member districts by that method, could you not? And yes. Right. So, in other words, a, a, another route of doing this that I believe is perhaps more appropriate uh, than trying to do an end run around the Constitution is simply do what the Constitution says, which is go to the legislature for a special act followed by a referendum. Legislature can, can always, on a special act, that's the way it's been done in many other counties, you're right. Mr. Grundy. <coughs> Ms. Blakely, I think my other question was going to be, um, I, and, and reading what you wrote to us in your opinion was my question was going to be also if we do abolish or if we push to abolish it, um, what about is that also going to change the the parameters or the duties and responsibilities of of this of the county commission when they become 
Charter Review Commission or Charter Review Commissioners. And I wasn't quite clear about that based on what I read in your language. Right. Can you clarify that for me, please? Well, the the answer to that is no, it doesn't change them at all, and it doesn't because we expressly say in the resolution that all their duties of the Board of County Commissioners, duties, powers, and functions are transferred to the Charter Commissioners. Okay. Okay, so if we're not changing the duties and responsibilities, then what in essence are we abolishing? Because that's not abolishing if we're just changing the title or changing the name. We're taking I think that's it what out. I'm asking for clarification. I'm sorry. We're taking it out of, of uh, Article 8, Section 1E that says that the legislature controls. And it, it says, except when otherwise provided by charter, a Board of County Commissioners has to look like five or seven commissioners, and they have to be um, elected as provided by law. So, so that was what our attempt was in creating charter commissioners. The second reason, well, we had several reasons. There were issues that, that y'all were talking about um, relating to um, single member districts and term limits and a variety in salaries. And the concept um, was to abolish the, the charter, abolish the county commissioners, taking them out of that particular provision and creating a, a uh, an identical body, if you will, with different name, but to get it out of that provision that controls um, by the legislature what that body can look like and how they are elected and I, their setting of their salaries and whether perhaps they might have term limits and a variety of things like that. Well, and, and staying specific, not, not, not necessarily the, the, the pay or what have you, but staying specifically on the, the word abolish because I want to be clear of the, the clear intent and the wording in the Constitution for the state is very specific and I don't want us to massage it or try to meander or get around it in any way is that about the word abolish it's, a, it's literally getting rid of that body as it's as it is it's not just changing or doing a transition or a name change it's getting rid of that body giving them new duties and new responsibilities and that's what i'm still not seeing out of that language what's your that's, yeah, let me help just a little bit just from sort of a simpler mind than miss blakely that <laughs> my understanding is is what you're even though we don't usually call them constitutional officers the county commissioners are constitutional officers you're abolishing the constitutional officer and you're creating a charter officer, and you're giving them the same responsibilities and duties, but their responsibility, their their duties under the Constitution have been abolished. In my That's correct. Okay. No. Mr. Chair, on, on that point, this kind of goes to what I was saying about this is really, I, I respectfully disagree with Mr. Grundy, uh, Commissioner Grundy, uh, really because what we're changing is the control of the state constitution over the county commissioners by simply changing their name. They, in fact, would be the same people. They instantly become charter commissioners instead of county commissioners. So really what we're talking about is a name change. In my opinion, with all due respect to our attorney, it's a name change in an attempt to circumvent the specific provisions of the Florida Constitution. Yeah. That's what I said. Mr. Well, Chairman, but, if I may, I'm sorry. I, I disagree with you in that it doesn't really abolish the county commission. It simply changes the county commission's name so that <coughs> we can regulate it as we want, not as state law and the Constitution provides. That's, that's my understanding as well. That's correct. Is, is how that works. And excuse me, Mr. Chair, I, I think with my meager, in this area of law, my meager understanding of it, uh, the only way it would be constitutional if you actually did shift over and transfer the exact duties over to the new entity. If you changed it in any way, then it wouldn't be constitutional. Uh, but it, that kind of goes along to my point, uh, ultimately, on this particular issue that uh, I, I wish to uh, share with the, the community at large. It does seem to be just a very simple technicality, uh, a, a, in, uh, a means to an end, which ultimately uh, seems like it may just not happen. We can go through all these motions here and it not achieve the objective or goal that you hope that it would be simply because of some legislation from um, uh, the state since it's division legislation, or uh, the, uh, a case comes up before the Florida Supreme Court and they go, you know what, we changed our mind. <laughs> we, we don't think so anymore. So for this, and, and, and this, is, this is my ultimate problem, and I know I'm taking a little, a, a little license here, Mr. Chair. Why are we here? Um, 
I, I do agree with Ms. Ferguson when, when, when he said the thing about uh, not enough in, in, uh, in, uh, investigation or information. Uh, I don't see this body as merely some conduit, some just flowing through here, whatever's popular. I think that this group has a responsibility to apply its individual judgment to it. Uh, I've, I've heard a lot about uh, what, what this body should be and what our government, but our form of government, if you look at it closely, is not a pure democracy. It's a, it's a republic. And we don't direct our, we, 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 every, every issue that comes up is not, everyone show, you, show your hands and let's count, and count noses. Uh, our congressmen, our legislators, they, have to, they are put in those positions to use their judgment because these issues are complex. Uh, and I know everyone who had, who had a comment here, I think they're all people of goodwill uh, and, and, and believe in their hearts what they're saying. So I'm not condemning that. Uh, what I'm saying is that these issues are complicated and they take time to uh, investigate. And sometimes what you, may, you, you feel in your heart may be the right thing to do. In the broad uh, picture of thing, it's just simply not the right thing to do. Okay. Any comments? Mr. Martin. On this, I got Martin. Martin. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Martin. yeah um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, a couple of comments, and then I had a question for our attorney. Um, also, change comes about through through courage to challenge. If you always go by the status quo, then you will always have the status quo. So, you know, um, I think that, uh, and I agree that it is we are supposed to have, be representative and have our own opinions and bring ultimately our uh, our knowledge and our belief system. We can't escape that and we shouldn't try to as individuals really. But um, it brings me to a question. Uh, you mentioned in your discussion earlier that there were several counties that currently have nonpartisan county commission elections. Is that correct? Yes. Are any of those currently being challenged that you're aware of? Many of them were established by special act, and that's why they have them, and that's lawful. Um, but not but, all? But n no, not all. Um, but again, now we have this legislation. I don't know what those other counties will do. Right, but as of this moment, none of them are currently being challenged. Not that I know of. Okay. So the reason I bring that up is because, you know, it, 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 is, it is not like we're totally reinventing the wheel here. This has been done in other places, and, you know, some of them have been doing it for quite some time. Is that not? I mean, like with the Special Act, the legislature have been doing it for, for a while now, have they not? Miami-Dade's been doing it because they've got a charter provision that is in the Constitution that specifically allows them to do that, and they've been doing it for 30, 40, 50 years. So I think I think that's Although an excellent. I think they've actually changed. I, I realize that they have a, a unique situation constitutionally than we do, but I would I would also say that uh, you know if you look at it, there's probably not a more diverse county in the state of Florida than Miami Dade County, and I think in fact it's the largest population county, and uh, they've been doing it for many times, and I don't think people are jumping off the bridges because of it. And, uh, you know, I think the politicians down there find a way to get quite happy from time to time under that current system, and they have pretty lively politics. So I guess my point being that, that I, I think that, that I'm, not, I'm not advocating that whatever issues come forward, that we do them simply to challenge the state and challenge that kind of thing. I think that's foolhardy. But I also don't think that we should totally shy away from something just because we're, you know, we're afraid that uh, that it might be challenged or something. Because to me, I mean, there, there is a balance in there somewhere. Because you know, if you look at it, so the greatest ac accomplishments, and I'm not going to list them, but you could list them easily. Uh, probably, if we listed ten of them, I bet four or five of them would be similar to everybody in this room. And al almost every one of those has been through some type of challenge. You know. Great ideas weren't always uh, just done through the system. Matter of fact, I, like I say, I would think I would make a case that a lot of our most sacred things were done with challenge. So I don't think we should shy away from them. And as I said, it's not being challenged now. Uh, and and the uh, the proposal to uh, 
to change. I, I'm, I don't particularly like the abolish word either because I think it implies something that it's not. But the uh, proposal basically is to, in fact, as I see it, give more home rule to the citizens of Alachua County, regardless of political persuasion or whatnot. It, it doesn't currently change their duties because it's specifically written in there. But I think that if 10 years from now, five years from now for some reason, but 10 years when another charter review commission comes up, if this has in fact been placed on the ballot, it will make it much simpler and more direct to affect what the county commission does and, and those types of things. Because right now, the way it is, even if the county commissioners themselves wanted to do some of these things, they couldn't do it, if I'm correct, under because of the way the Constitution is. So it even limits them if they wanted to, for instance, do some of these things. So what this does, this, this proposal to change, the, to change or abolish the county commission and make them, in fact, more home rule commissioners, is it, it, it frees them and the citizens of Hawthorne to set up parameters for what the county commission in this county should be. And that's, you know, for various reasons, that's one of the things that's happened. You know, Jacksonville did some things. I mean, I won't go into all that, but everybody has done some things that have brought home rule to them, and I don't see those. I'll put it this way, and I'll shut up. Those counties that have these unique areas of the Constitution where they have a lot more home rule in Lachua County, I don't see any big movements for them to go back to the system that we're under. As a matter of fact, I would, I would say that if you were to poll people down there, I don't have a scientific, the vast majority of them probably like the fact that they can have more home rule. I don't, I don't see, I've not seen any movements to reverse those types of things in Jacksonville, Miami-Dade, and those kind of things. So I go back to something somebody else said, what are we afraid of? You know, I'm not seeking just a challenge. But I don't think we should be afraid of it either. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate those comments. Any further comments from the board? Well, Mr. Brinkman. I'm, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> That's I, all right. Probably all of us would like to go home now, but no. actually I have to disagree with Commissioner Martin. Uh, well, actually, let me ask, do it this way. Let me ask the attorney. Uh, if we did create a charter commission, is it possible to significantly alter the duties of the county commission or to uh, – otherwise change the powers of the county commission. For instance, could we strip the county c government of the ability to pass environmental regulations of any kind like it currently has? You could, I'm not going to answer that yes or no. Um, you I could, didn't expect you could, you, could. <laughs> you can change, um, you can certainly change the structure. You could have, for an example, a countywide elected mayor um, you could probably um, do a variety of things to peel off some of their duties and give give those duties to some other entity. Whether you could, whether that means you can pass a charter provision that says they can't do in, in anything related to environmental law, uh, that would probably conflict with general law, so you you couldn't do that. I mean, again, it would be. I would probably need to be a little bit more specific and, and check out the statutes. But but my view would be that sometimes the legislature grants power, um, you know, preempts everything but X, and then grants um, the county the power to do stormwater, for example, stormwater management, stormwater regulation, um, and then leaves it to each individual county. And if that were the case. Um, you couldn't preempt them by a charter amendment to say they didn't have that power. Although, you know. So by, by following that line of reasoning, that basically means although we might be able to finesse some things with the Charter Commission, like you say, that the way they're elected or perhaps their salary, if it conflicts with state law as it exists now or in the future, uh, it really would – you can't really do that through the charter because you cannot conflict with state law. You'd have to go through a special act of the legislature and a referendum. Correct. Because the, the Constitution itself says that the the charter, the county, charter counties um, have all power of local self-government not inconsistent with general law right. or with special law approved by the electors. So if there's a specific general law that says the county 
shall be responsible for X, then having a charter provision that says the county cannot be responsible for X would be inconsistent with that constitutional mandate. As another example, I believe counties are charged with basically providing social services in the state of Florida. And so we couldn't remove that responsibility from the county government. Well, they certainly are, are charged with the responsibility of having county health departments, right. for example. Um, and, and I don't think you could remove that, no. I think the, um, since Professor Little's not here tonight, he always would say there's that little thing called the Constitution <laughs> that we always, no matter what we do, it's got to be within the Constitution and, and the laws of the sure, state of Florida. Sometimes it's sure. <laughs> <laughs> At <laughs> least to the best. There's some hope that that's not the case always, yeah. apparently. <laughs> Anyway, that's where we are. Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me, uh, I was going to recognize Mr. Grundy, and I'll come back to you. Um, actually, I'm going to probably be a little bit longer. So this is very, very <laughs> okay. short. All right. Moment. Mr. Martin. I just want to make it clear that I was not, I never used the word significant changes. And also to quote, not you, and it was down here, uh, to, I, I said it would give more home rule. I didn't say make significant changes. And also to quote, uh, Professor Little, since we, some of us are quoting him, he also said, I think he pulled his glasses off and said something like this, what we're, this there is nothing radical about this idea, I think was what he said and proposed to the what we're calling the little proposal. So I, don't, I, I actually think he's very wise in that. What we're, there's a lot of emotions, but really if you look at it, even if you're opposed or for it, it's not that radical. It just sounds that way. I can get that from the book a little. <laughs> Book a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, there, there are, as he pointed out, there, there are uh, various forms of government throughout our country that you could find many examples of, of every type. All right, Mr. Grundy. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, a couple of things, um, and I don't want to open this up. I want to give this disclaimer going forward. But something that Commissioner Ferguson brought to our attention last meeting that I thought we uh, really need to take heed of was there was still some questions that we have. And um, I did some digging on something we reconsidered last meeting, and I have also questions. So I did some digging and investigating, and I think questions are a healthy thing and a good thing. Um, and some of it was some from some members on, on this commission. Um, a few years back, um, there was a, a cement plant that was in the county, um, that was in the unincorporated area of the county, and they wanted to burn tires as a way to provide energy or do whatever they were going to do, and it would put significant amount of bad things in the air, Partic thank you, Mr. Chair, particulates in the air, uh, which would have been would have had some significant problems with the county. And then the county rules of governing air and water uh, prohibited them from doing so. So in order for them to circumvent that, they got incorporated into a municipality. And some concerns that Commissioner Brinkman brought forward um, regarding air and environmental and air and quality standards made me look at that and say, like, hmm, are we digging up a can of worms? Again, these are questions uh, that, you know, what are we changing? So what I'm going to suggest to when, when this body comes back before us is there's going to be further questions for that, that issue, and I think that they need to be addressed and answered um, and not just concepts. So that's some, a point of clarity uh, for you uh, as, as me. And I believe in being forward on the issue and being clear, like I said, uh, I'm pretty straightforward. I either vote yes or no, and I'm not going to. Unless there's an argument, I can reconsider it. And like I said before, um, I'm, I'm always open to changing. How, if, if, if there's an argument for it I can, and I can understand it, I'll change, and just like I did on that issue. But um, I think those are legitimate questions that we should take under consideration, and uh, that's one. Second part of it, not related to any of that, is also um, the, the last charter, I think probably Commissioner Glazer can remember this one, is that time the county was taking up the issue of doing campaign finance, um, and it wasn't allowed under the charter. We could not do campaign finance reform. But what they did to address that issue is they put on the ballot was a non-binding question on the ballot to the citizens to say, do you want to have campaign finance? And you probably could correct me, Commissioner Glazer. I'm paraphrasing probably very badly. The and very commission did that, not the charter. Okay. Okay. Well, then but there was a non-binding question. Um, and I guess my question would be to Ms. Blakely, could this body put on uh, a non-binding question on the ballot? 
Um, that would ha not be binding, but it would be a question. The charter doesn't seem to allow that for a non-bonding question. Um, you've, your, your charge is amendments or revision to the charter, and it doesn't, it's not broadly stated. It's those two words, amendments or revisions to the charter. So, no, I don't think you have the power to put a non-binding question out there. All right. Further comments by members of the board? I have one question for the attorney. Yes, sir. Mr. Martin, while she's up there. Um, I heard, you know, I know there's been a, a lot of kind of talking around it, but there, apparently there's some pro a proposal in particular or maybe some proposals such as, and I will just say it because I'm straightforward too, the single-member district that some people, which I was on the losing side, so I guess that means I couldn't reconsider it, but there are some I hear and, you know, through the public here, that uh, I, I, I can read the tea leaves that that might be an issue that people are thinking about. So with that in mind, I want to ask a question. Um, if something, a specific proposal, by specific I mean not vague as like single-member districts, but a specific proposal, let's say, you know, it had language like, you know, it was an actual crafted language, and it was voted down, that does not preclude any member from bringing up another proposal during this process that may be similar and on the same subject as the, anyone that was voted down, does it not? I mean, it only precludes us from, from bringing up a specific one. In other words, and I'm not saying I'm going to do this, but if I wanted to make a motion to bring forth a particular issue and I, it, was, it was modestly different than one that was voted down, could I not do that? Do you want to answer that, Mr. Chair? I'm, I'm, I'm just asking either – I'm, I'm just asking for clarification. Right. right. I think – Because uh, it could – As long as it is, isn't the same essence, you know, trying to just reword the same motion, uh, then I think you could certainly move it and the end would be up to majority whether or not it went forward or not. But, but uh, as long as it's just not a rewording of the same idea and there's some significant or tan uh, tangible change to the motion – but as we talked about earlier with reconsideration, the reason you don't reconsider at the same uh, meeting without advertising if, if, if because, you know, people would leave and, you know, the same people that came here and argued against it might have left and then a few minutes later, well, let's reconsider that. And so that's what we were talking about earlier. But, but the idea is what you're saying. I think, we've, I think you would agree with that, that as long as it's a, it's a different motion and uh, enough that it shows that it wasn't just rewarding, we'd recognize it. Yeah, I'll give you two very specific examples just so we can be clear. One, and I don't think we voted on it one way or another, but Mr. Uh, Glazier, I believe it was, right. put forward a proposal that didn't get, he withdrew it. That's right. It never got voted on, and it was about single member districts, but it was clearly different than some of the others. Right. If he or someone else brought that same one up, we could discuss it because it wasn't voted down one way or another, and it was pretty different, right? Well, it, it was never considered. Any motion can be made. Somebody could certainly object to its consideration, or they could uh, ask, um, for, for question the, the chair whether or not it's proper to recognize that, and then we would always leave it to the body whether or not they wanted to take it up. But that I, I'm not advocating for it one way or another. I'm just, and the other examples, like I talked about it, but I never proposed it and never voted a mixture of like at large and single member districts, which would be something completely different than we've actually voted on. Well, we voted on one of those proposals. I uh, think we voted. Did his, his, right. his was an amendment to that? Was an amendment or a hybrid one? Yeah, to it. Mr. Glazer's was. But at one time, I don't have the minutes right here in front of me. But we, um, on I think it was. Uh, uh, yeah, we changed we changed the at large to three at large to two at large, and then we came back. That was approved, and and then I think it was approved anyway. The, then, but when it went as the the amended motion went before the body, then it was turned down. Okay. And so um, we did vote on that once. But but again, any member can make any motion they want, and um, and uh, any member can object to consideration for one reason or another, and we'll make a ruling and see what y'all want to do. But in the end. Eight I'm of not us. saying I'm doing right. Anything. I understand. I, just, we're just trying to just clarify. Get clarified because I heard comments right. that made it sound like you could. But we're getting down to the nitty gritty, so I think it's important to get all this out because I mean we're getting really. I mean we're one more public hearing and then the second, the third public hearing and then it's vote time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Mr. Grundy. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> that, that's always an order and has been seconded. Uh, let me just announce as we recognize that motion, uh, our next public hearing then will be the 26th of May at 530 in this room. Um, we appreciate so much everyone's comments tonight and your time. And uh, with that, without objection, then we'll stand adjourned.